Kwe, and welcome to the 2022 Powwow Pitch Business to Consumer Semifinals, presented by RBC, Shopify, Meta, and MasterCard. Sunshine Tenasco and Indigenous, and I'm the founder of Powwow Pitch. I will be your host for tonight's Powwow Pitch Consumer Semifinals where Indigenous entrepreneurs from across Turtle Island will pitch their businesses to win funds and support to grow. There will be three category winners tonight, consumer goods, consumer beauty and wellness, and consumer retail. The winner from each category will win $1,000 cash and advance to the finals, where we will be giving away a total of $50,000 in cash prizes to help them scale up their businesses. Thank you for joining us. Eight years ago today, I started Powwow Pitch with the vision of combining Indigenous culture and social innovation to create a platform to celebrate, showcase and spotlight Canada's Indigenous entrepreneurs. Over the years, Powwow Pitch has supported more than a thousand Indigenous entrepreneurs to take their businesses to the next level. And this week, we will support 130 more. 2022 has already been a landmark year for Powwow Pitch as we welcome incredible partners to the Powwow Pitch family, partners that share our values. Thank you to our presenting sponsors, our silver sponsors, our seed sponsors, and our collaborating partners. With their support, we have unlocked new opportunities for Indigenous entrepreneurs and grown our prize and grant pools to more than $200,000. This summer, 2,400 Indigenous entrepreneurs pitched live at powwows and submitted their video pitches across Turtle Island from nations like the Salish, Inuit, Métis, Cree, Ojibwe, Anishinaabe, Mi'kmaq, and Navajo. We shortlisted the top entrepreneurs from each category and matched them with outstanding mentors in the lead up to this week's semifinals. Every night this week, you'll have the chance to watch Powwow Pitch semifinalists pitch to our esteemed panel of judges as they compete for a place in the Powwow Pitch Finals taking place on October 19th. The prizes include $1,000 for the winner of each category, a $1,000 for the People's Choice Prize, a $5,000 Alumni Prize, $5,000 for third place, $10,000 for second place, and $25,000 for first place. Each semi-finalist has one minute for their pitch, followed by two minutes of Q&A by the judges. Judges are evaluating the entrepreneur's presentation, execution, and follow through, and the impact winning Powwow Pitch and the 25,000 would have on their business. Join the conversation online tonight using the hashtag Powwow Pitch. Let's begin by meeting tonight's esteemed panel of judges. Joining us this evening is Herb Zobel, Vice President of Commercial Financial Services at RBC. Debbie Reed, Indigenous Policy Manager at Meta. Kyle St. Amour Brennan, Bill Native Program Manager at Shopify. Amisha Parikh, Vice President Product Management at MasterCard. AJ Paulandino, Small Business Marketing Director at Canada Post. It's time to meet the Consumer Goods Semi-Finalists. Let's get started. Aloha mai kako. My name is Jaylene Kanani and I am the founder and artist for Noho Home. At Noho Home, we provide Hawaiian inspired luxury home decor. We call it style with aloha. I founded Noho Home to provide an authentic connection through unique mo'olelo or storytelling. As a proud native Hawaiian, we want to share our culture in a more authentic way. Since launching in 2019, we have grown year over year by over 100%. Uh, some highlights include partnering with our National Museum as well as our palace uh, to create collections and we are also launched in Bloomingdale's last month. If awarded this prize, we would 
use it to create um, additional capacity for sales and marketing to continue to elevate the work that we do. Mahalo and aloha. Great job, Great job. Billy. Great job. Great job. <laughs> Great job, Daily. Uh, just a Thank quick you. question. How has your traction been so far to date in terms of like sales? The answer is, <laughs> the answer is we have great traction and our challenge is capacity. So resources, so capital um, investment as well as human capacity. Thank you. Thank you. That was going to be my question, actually, on the human side. What's your staff complement um, right now? Uh, well, our makeup is uh, we have four full-time employees and four part-time. Oh, okay. Four full-time, four part-time. <laughs> and um, we built out a micro factory in Hawaii so that we could actually manufacture in Hawaii and, and participate in workforce development and job training. Um, so that that was a really important part to bring some of our manufacturing. Yes, thank you. Yeah, we got, yeah, we got a great answer. Um, how do you drive new customers? Like, what's your marketing strategy? So we we have done a lot of um, grassroots social media. Um, we do a very small amount of paid advertising, very very small, um, and really a lot of PR. Um, and it's and quite frankly, we have a lot of outreach in. So as a um, woman owned Native Hawaiian uh, entrepreneur, uh, we have had a lot of um, interest from media, and we could leverage that if we just had more capacity, or I had more hours in the day, one or the other. Right. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah, that was an incredible pitch. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Jaylene. Uh, I think you've had a ton of questions coming your way. I have one more for you here and would just love to know what makes your product unique? Mm. So all of our, not only designs, but our designs are all imbued with Native Hawaiian uh, culture, values, um, but not only the prints themselves, the whole experience of Okay, not only the prints themselves, but the whole experience. So we try to be very experiential in our storytelling. So not just the patterns, but also the experiences. Um, we talk about Hawaiian values. We talk about Hawaiian uh, uh, native authentic, um, excuse me, native flora and fauna, our cultural practices, our arts and crafts. We try to imbue all of that into our designs. Amazing. Perfect. Great job. Good job. <laughs> hey, my company is at a critical turning point. I'm Carrie Gray, founder of Shades of Gray Indigenous Pet Treats and a member of the Algonquins of Pickwalkmagon. As a small Canadian manufacturer, we deliver high quality pet treats and products made from single ingredient proteins. I generate jobs, create community, and our products are vital to pet parents pets and their parents. The last few years we've experienced phenomenal growth. People are craving to be a part of this community and want to support Indigenous businesses. I'm asking for your support because manufacturing at scale is cost prohibitive and our business is at a critical inflection point. I would invest the $25,000 in the capacity to increase the capacity of my facility so I can finally expand to the U.S. and meet the consumer demand of this $95 billion dollar market. A powwow pitch win would allow a small indigenous business to become a successful pet treat brand that is playing in the big leagues and winning. Thanks for your consideration and support. Chi miigwech. Good job. Great job. <laughs> I, I absolutely love the passion. Uh, you can hear it in your voice, in your pitch. Uh, incredible, incredible pitch overall. Um, you talked a little bit about growth. Would love to hear um, what your sales were like or what your revenues are like for the, the past year. Uh, the past year we did uh, over 200,000 last year and we've already seen that to date this year. We're, we're looking at doubling again. Um, so my next year projection is half a million plus in sales just here in Canada. Good job, Carrie, on the presentation. Uh, just wondering uh, what sets your dog treats apart from the competition? Our 
dog treats are a single ingredient protein and we use unique protein. So we use beaver, bison, elk, venison, and rabbit. And I farm the rabbit. I have a federally inspected meat rabbit business through Shades of Grey Rabbitry, which is my sister company that supports our business. So we use no antibiotics. Excellent job. I saw you in at summer solstice. Your pitch is so well done. Congratulations for that progress. Um, how do you get your, your customers? Uh, social media mostly. We are a huge Facebook social media supporter. We advertise on social media with Facebook and Instagram. Ooh. That's our main source of advertising. And other than that, we use organic traffic through our social media. Thank you. Quick, quick, Carrie. Um, what's one thing that needs to go right for you to hit your uh, projected targets for this year of doubling your GMV? <laughs> we need this renovation. We need a renovation in the facility that is specific for our freeze dried treats. It's, uh, it's growing in demand and having that space will allow our processes to be more consistent, add uh, just strength to our team and our, our visibility of being able to get the product. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Hi, I'm Amy, the founder of Native Love Notes. Native Love Notes is a brand that infuses products like stickers and stationery with fun, colorful graphic design and indigenous humor. Native Love Notes really began at a time when joy and laughter and inspiration was needed. My favorite saying is res kids can do anything. We've come from a small apartment to two offices and two offices to a storefront. Native Love Notes has grown exponentially in just one year of being in business, but we're not done growing yet. At the heart of what we do, we believe in community before competition. We want to expand north to my home community of a Pasquia Cree Nation. And with the help of Powell Pitch, we can open an e-commerce fulfillment center and a print on demand shop serving indigenous entrepreneurs. Our services will handle printing and logistics for startup brands so entrepreneurs can focus on building their businesses. We've secured clients and a space. Now we need investment funds to make this happen. With 25K, we'll be able to serve indigenous entrepreneurs in Northern Manitoba and contribute to the local economy in a big way. Thank you so much. Woo! Good job, Amy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good job, Amy. Uh, just wondering how how has uh, your traction been, like your re sales and revenue so far? So for Native Love Notes, we've gone uh, and built over seven thousand orders this year. We've done B two B, and we've opened ourselves up to four streams of revenue already within one year. Oh, great. Congratulations. I uh, saw you at Manitowabi. Great pitch. Go OCN, my own hometown. My own hometown. Um, I love your product. I love your website. Um, where, where do you see yourself going next? So I have on top of this other venture that I would love to do to support, you know, my local community. Um, I'm also looking at expanding further into Winnipeg as well. So and then, of course, in other cities across um, the country where there is a lot of uh, indigenous population like Edmonton or Saskatoon. Thank you. Chima Glitch for that amazing pitch. Um, how do you get new customers? So a lot of the time we find our reach on social media. So our we right now on <clears throat> Instagram we're hit, we're just about to hit thirty thousand followers. Um, we have about six thousand on Facebook. So our our reach is primarily on social media. So whenever we want to launch a new product or anything like that or share a new design, we always do it on social media, and that's where we find most of our customer base. Amazing. Uh, thank you so much for that amazing pitch. You could hear the uh, the passion in your idea. I would just love to hear um, just kind of the roots around what motivated you to start this. So um, honestly, I was alone and depressed in my apartment and I thought I need to put my skills to good use to bring joy and laughter to people. Um, and so I decided to do some designs up for fun, share them on my personal like, social media. And people said, you know what? You need to share this with the world. And I did, and now we're here. <laughs> Yeah. Good job. Good job. 
Anin, my name is Robin Ivory from Curve Lake, owner and creator of Indigenously Infused, where we grow, harvest, and infuse the traditional plants into candles, mists, and melts. Like Sensi, only natural and indigenously infused. We use Mother Earth friendly packaging, ingredients, and highlight Ojibwe on all of our products. It's revival of our culture, healing for our people. The business was born out of healing when I began my journey on the Red Road. I was able to live again and to experience and teach creators gift in my own way. I posted a cedar candle on Facebook and that's what started it all. I went from full-time teacher to full-time boss mom. Now we sell online at events and run workshops. A store and warehouse is underway, but the brand and demand is there and we need powwow pitch to reach and inspire even more youth, moms, dads, and aunties alike. Because as a mother of three, this is more than a pitch. This is an introduction to the legacy of Indigenously Infused and only the beginning of the influence it will have. So, are you ready to Indigenously Infuse? Miigwech. Woohoo! Good, Good job. Good job, Robin. Um, Thank you. If you were to win how I'll pitch and win the $25,000, how would you invest that? Uh, to be able to scale up and to reach the demand that we have built now. So, in the... Um, we have a lot of customers, we have stores looking for our products and we need the equipment to be able to put them at faster. Gotcha. Um, incredible pitch. Thank you so much for sharing your passion with us. Um, yeah. Would love to hear what your vision is of your business in the next three to five years. I can see us in Walmart. Anywhere that Sensi is sold, um, Indigenous Infusion can be there. So. We're going big. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, yeah, fantastic pitch, Robin. Thank you so much. Um, curious to know, how are you marketing your business today? Currently, uh, e-commerce, so Shopify, my website, uh, Facebook, Instagram, um, and of course, face-to-face, -face, we attend a lot of events like powwows and Indigenous celebrations. Great job, Robin. Um, how have your revenues been so far since you started? This, so um, we're about two years in. This year, our sales have quadrupled. Um, I actually had a baby six months ago. And yeah. so I'm getting my freedom back. So I was able to do that in the last six months. Just imagine where we're going now. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Great product. Uh, congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> um, so what is your staff compliment? Sorry, what was that? What's your staff compliment? How many employees do you have? Oh, okay. So currently it's about three. There's myself and a couple other family members. Um, we have mentors on board as well. Um, various other community members that are not full-time employees, but that's also something that with more equipment, we'll be able to do. Great, thank you so much. Great job. Miigwech. Great job. Hi, my name is Nikita Thomas. I'm from Pelican Lake First Nation, Saskatchewan, and I currently live in Edmonton, Alberta. My company is TP Circle Honorary Monuments. We are in our second year of business and hope to triple our size this year. Sadly, my family suffered the loss of my brother and we had a difficult time affording a headstone. As a result, my brother's grave went without a headstone for many years. We don't wish this upon any family and that's why we started our TP Circle, which creates affordable indigenous themed concrete headstones that can include beautiful symbolic images. They are ground by hand and crafted by skilled indigenous artisans so they will last for generations. I would use the 25K to buy sandblasting equipment to engrave names directly onto the headstones, to build my website and to drive awareness of our company. We want to help families respect and honor their loved ones in a way that's affordable. Thank you. Good job. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Thank you so much for um, for that pitch. A uh, really a touching story uh, and inspiration for starting your business. Um, you talked a bit about um, one of the things you would do is um, invest behind building awareness of your business. What? How would you plan to do that? So there are workshops in Alberta that are for Indigenous people, and we would just we would like to take our product to the 
uh, workshops and there's different powwows that we'd like to go to um more more so i'm t awareness i'm talking about our website and and marketing thank you great um again yeah fantastic pitch uh such a such a great story as well and uh, and really motivation behind starting your business so thank you um where do you see your business in the next five years so i'm hoping right now we've only been selling headstones in saskatchewan alberta and british columbia so i would like to branch out and to go into the u.s as well good job nikita just wondering um are how do you uh, market your business i know you said it was so right now in those provinces right now, go ahead <laughs> right now we're only uh on facebook so we've so we started our business last year in June, and right now we're only using Facebook as a platform. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for that great pitch You're and welcome. this unique market. Um, what's your overhead versus profit margins? So we've sold uh, fifty-eight headstones since we started last year. We're hoping to triple it this year. Amazing. Um, don't have enough time to ask another question, but I love your business and I love your business idea. I hope that you follow through. And if you need help with the website, give me a shout. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Great job. Ever wonder how we Inuit are so good at tolerating the cold weather? Hello, my name is Tana Simpson. I'm a new from Saks Harbor in Canada's Western Arctic. I'm about to let you in on our little secret. My company, Kiviet Inc., is established in 2019, specialized in producing Kiviet products that are sustainable and guaranteed to keep you warm. Introducing Nini Heat, a reusable all-natural hand warmer. My people have been using Kiviet for many millennia by lining our mitts and mukluks to combat the extreme cold, and now you can too. Kiviet is from the undercoat of the majestic muskox, which survived the ice age. It's a rare fiber and is eight times warmer than sheep's wool, non-abrasive, and even when wet, it maintains its heat retention properties. Although only in production for a short time, we've sold more than a thousand units with many positive reviews. The annual hand warmer industry is worth more than 1.4 billion US. In today's market, almost all of these hand warmers are single use, not good. Our product is different. As we continue to grow and establish our business, this investment would help us to provide environmentally friendly packaging, increase our marketing and production. Great job. <laughs> that was fast. Thank you. <laughs> yes, fantastic, fantastic fish. Thank you for sharing um, so much about this uh, amazing, you. amazing product. Um, I'd love to just understand uh, a bit about um, your revenues to date and where you're really forecasting over the next year um, in terms of your sales. Okay, so up to date, we had, um, in 2019, we started and we had started late in the year. So in October, we got up to about $1,700 worth of sales. And as of now, we are up to 13,000 this year. So we have total sales of 20,000. COVID hit us a little hard. We couldn't do in-person markets. That's great. Uh, fantastic pitch. Um, loved it. Loved the product. Loved the unique stories. Uh, would like to know, so where are you selling today? You just mentioned markets. Is that the, the only spot? Are you selling anywhere else? Um, I do have a Shopify store as well. And so we are selling globally. And I do a lot of in-person events because you really have to feel this fiber to believe it. Thank you, Tadis. Great presentation. Um, are you planning to diversify your products into other things other than the hand warmers oh we've already done that we produce yarn and knitwear as well okay great and we do plan you... on creating a heart oh sorry no no you go um, we do plan on creating a harvest friendly line so that um, harvesters are able to have the warmth without worrying about destroying their knitwear as well Interesting you said harvesters, because that was going to be my question. How do you harvest the product? 
So they are harvested for sustenance in the Arctic on Victoria Island or on Banks Island, where I'm originally from. And they are harvested for the food. We purchase the hides and we have them um, scraped and dried by other people in the community so that the money is um, distributed throughout the community as well. And then we are shipped down to us in my fiber mill and that is where we produce. Oh. Excellent. Thanks so much. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. Great presentation. Amazing. Great job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> wow. Well done, Consumer Goods semifinalists. It's now time to meet the Consumer Beauty and Wellness semifinalists. Goli, I'm Dana Elijah from Nyota Ag, founder of Spirit Earth Holistics, your eco friendly and indigenous beauty and wellness creator, infusing timeless indigenous remedy. Our market is a booming $20 billion industry. Since 2010, Spirit Earth has been providing job opportunity within indigenous communities. With a 500% growth rate since inception, we average revenue at $375,000 since 2019. We are positioned for expansion in the mainstream market through world-class trade shows, such as the Vancouver and Toronto Gift Show, and the CHFA, Canada's largest trade corp for natural and organic product. This pivotal move will give us a 150% increase in year one, a 300% increase in year two. If we win Powell Pitch, we will upgrade our packaging image and promotional outfit and obtain a natural product number from Health Canada to make us more marketable. Spirit Earth, made with love by nature. Wow. Good job. Um, just wondering, what's your personal background that got you into this business? So I'm a holistic wellness consultant. I'm also a herbologist. And um, in my community, I'm from Oneida First Nations, and I've been working with the elders here, learning about plant and wellness uh, remedy. And I just infused that all together. I'm really a, a person that's eco um conscious about our environment so all of our products are also natural nat source with indigenous medicines and good for the earth and our bodies excellent thank you excellent pitch thank you so much um how do you market uh, how do you reach your customers how do i make my customers well how do you one, reach them? we haven't had we haven't done any marketing as uh, only doing trade shows. So powwow country really is our source of economy right now. And it has grown from our first year making $75,000 to currently we're averaging at 375,000 a year. And that's strictly from powwow country, traveling to Canada and the US, and then they come back to the website. We also uh, 60, uh, I'll say more like 70% of our business is wholesale. So we market to um, indigenous trading posts, craft, uh, craft stores, and that sort of thing. Excellent, great job. Amazing, uh, those are some great details. Uh, in your best vision, where do you see yourself in five years? In five years, I see myself in a huge uh, manufacturing facility located in my community here in Oneida, employing 25 to 50 people so we Amazing. can distribute uh, globally. Excellent. Thank you so much. Really like Excellent job. Wow. Great kid. Well done. Yeah. Um. Hello, judges. My name is Francesca Almeid, and I am the founder of Sweet Grass Soap. My soap making journey began shortly after my son was born. He had eczema and like most mothers, I started using big brand skincare products. I noticed started to the skin irritation. So I researched the products and I learned that these soaps are mild detergents. So I decided to seek out better options. I got inspired by indigenous makers and the natural ingredients they added in. So I decided to give it a try. Well, let me tell you, I fell in love with soap making. I love, I then launched my website in June of 2021. And in my first year, my products were featured in Fashion Magazine, BC Business Magazine. And I was also selected to be the first Indigenous entrepreneur on the Statistics Canada Business Hub webpage. I started out making only a few hundred dollars a month to making about 5,000 a month. And that's an increase of about 2,400%. My goal for the next year is to double that with help by investing in bigger equipment, 
renting a bigger space and hiring help. I absolutely love what I do. Through this business, I have discovered an even deeper passion to embrace my culture. My goal is to not only build a brand, but to also create jobs. Thank you. Great job. Great job. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Yeah, great job. Um, what differentiates your products from your competitors? Um, I just, I, I like to say I design my a bit different. I also create, I also learned how to make a sweetgrass hydrostyle by actually picking sweetgrass and then making it into a hydrostyle by diffusing, or sorry, by um, steaming it in distilled water. So I use that sweetgrass water to make the soap. Amazing. Um, that was an incredible pitch. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. I um, would love to hear your vision for your business in the next three to five years. Yeah, so my three to five year goal is to, I mean, not only, you know, the obvious of making it a bigger brand, um, but I also want to add in more products. Um, you know, I want to do a skincare line, I want to do a baby line. That was actually my inspiration is for my son's skincare. Um, I want to create jobs for other Indigenous mothers like myself. Um, I want to, uh, I mean, my long term goal is to just be Canada wide. I would love to have shops everywhere. I want it to make it affordable. I want people to enjoy making it. I want to teach. That's my biggest thing. I love engaging people in things. Um, in terms of money, it's hard to say because I just love the job. I just love doing it so much. And I represent it so long. People, I love the feedback I get from people. Um, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. <laughs> That's all I can say, really. Sounds fantastic. Thank you. Thanks so much, Francesca. That was a, a great, great pitch. Um, Thank you. Question about your marketing. How are you marketing today? Uh, and how do you plan to evolve that in the future? Yeah, so that's one of my biggest challenges, actually. Um, I I mean, I, I did take business at school. Um, there was a little as small aspect of it in marketing. However, I don't quite know. I'm not quite there with marketing. So all I'm doing right now is just through uh, social media. Uh, I have a website. Uh, I do e-commerce. Um, I also attend various events like markets and conventions, powwows big events to get my name out there. Um, the social media has really, really been helpful. That's helped me uh, get noticed, um, you know, through the uh, magazines and stuff like that. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Great job, Francesca. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Jack 59 was founded in 2015 and incorporated in 2020 when we got serious about creating an impact um, on reducing plastic consumption and giving back to our community. Hi, my name is Vanessa Marshall. I am Métis from the Métis Nation of Alberta. Jack 59 is a sustainable line of hair care products that are all handmade by a group of amazing women. We have 11 staff members with 36% uh, sorry, 36 being Indigenous. Uh, we did not invent solid shampoo, but we did perfect it. To date, we have eliminated over 600,000 plastic bottles from entering our environment and given back thousands of dollars to Aboriginal organizations. The winnings from Powell Pitch will allow us to launch our children's line, which from the profits, we will directly donate the 25,000 back over a three year period towards Aboriginal youth exploring environmental sciences, which directly supports our heritage and traditional beliefs. This is a win-win for Aboriginal youth, Powell Pitch and Jack 59. Last year, our sales Great job. <laughs> great job. Great. I kind of great. missed a bit there. That's okay. <laughs> oh, great job. Thank you so much for, for sharing your pitch and, and the story with us and all the great things you're doing um, in, with your business and in the community. Um, I will ask the question, um, how have your sales been? Our sales are great. Uh, last year we grew by 500% and this year we're actually on board to grow by another 35 to 40%. Fantastic. Amazing. And uh, would love to hear a little bit more about what your five-year plan is. What, what do you want to be in five years from now? So we are actually um, in the middle of doing a launch into the United States. Uh, we applied for a can export grant. Um, so part of the portions from um, that will go into launching into the U.S. Um, ideally, we want to be a, a global brand in five years um, available across the world. Thank you, Vanessa. Good presentation. Uh, you you mentioned a lot about giving back to the community. Are you know you must keep something for yourself. Are you is this a profitable venture for you? 
Absolutely. Um, yeah, we, we have great profits. Uh, of course, we have been putting most of that back into the company. I take uh, about, uh, and we do offer living wages to all of our staff. So that's about, we calculate it to be about 40% of our um, revenue, but absolutely we are very profitable. Thank you. Excellent. Great pitch. Um, how do you market your product? Uh, currently we use um, Google ads, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we just actually started a relationship with Rogers Media. So they have ads that go up. Uh, they can do geofences for us. Um, if we happen to be at a, you know, a certain event, um, we do pretty much everything that we can do. We have a couple of media teams that we work with. So um, we've been in things like Martha Stewart Magazine and yeah. Great job. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Bojo. We commemorate May 28, 2021, as the day 215 Indigenous children were found buried at the site of the former Kamloops Indian Residential School. This dark part of Canadian history motivated me to apply to be a fundraiser for the Woodland Cultural Center's Save the Evidence campaign. As a certified aromatherapy professional, I founded LJ Turtle Aromatherapy in 2014. Last year, I fundraised over $15,000 by selling 2,300 of my handcrafted felted diffuser acorns. Building off that success, I'm working again with Woodland to fundraise for their new language program, Cycle of Ceremonies. Winning powwow pitch will allow me to scale the social enterprise capacity of LJ Turtle. Aiming to bridge the historical and cultural gap, I want to see this acor these acorns and their message of hope and resilience in more museums, art galleries, and university gift shops across Turtle Island. Miigwech. <laughs> Thanks so much, Lisa. That was, uh, that was a really, really great pitch. Um, we'd love to know a little bit more about how you're marketing your business today and any plans for the future. Uh, marketing right now is involving sending um, actual acorns to different uh, museums, art galleries, um, so they would have a sample with an introduction letter that I explain what it is I am doing and I ask them for the sale and I've given them deadlines. Great job, Lisa. Just wondering where would you like to see this business in three to five years? Um, I would like it to be a, a standalone uh, social enterprise um, where they're still selling the acorns, um, scaling to um, make DIY kits. I had that idea for um, having say schools buy the DIY kits, um, money would go towards the social enterprise and then they would be able to sell the acorns as part of a fundraiser for themselves. Thank you. Excellent pitch. I love your ideas. I love your passion. Um, what's your staff compliment like? Um, it's me. <laughs> this year, I, I, re I recognized early in the year that I wasn't going to be able to handcraft all of them again. My goal is to double the sales, so I want to hit 5,000 sales of acorns, so I needed help. So I've started, uh, I actually have four people trained. It's piecework, so I pay them per acorn. Um, and then I have volunteers doing the foraging for me because they are actual acorn tops, so I have to spend time going and getting those. So people helped me with that last year. And then I have a, a volunteer person who drills the holes in the acorns for me as well. Excellent. Amazing. Great pitch. Um, what's your financial projections for the rest of the year? With the acorn, like if I can hit that 5,000 uh, target for the acorns, we uh, it should be $20,000. Yeah, the holiday season we did really well last year. Like we raised the fifteen, so I, I expect we should be able to get to twenty thousand. Amazing! Good job. Great job. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hi everyone. My name is Leslie Asu, and I am the owner of Standing Spruce Farm. So we are a home-based Indigenous wellness company where we focus on everything to do with the home, but primarily soap is our passion. So in our journey that's come over the last 10 years, we've done steady growth, just enough for us to kind of 
support our family and keep things moving, we're now after two years of e-commerce able to move to the next level. The 25,000 is almost exactly what we need to carry that business to the next level and go into international trade. We do have customers who ask us if we're able to fill larger orders, but it's just the equipment for cutting, lifting, housing that we need to finish that. So it would involve some presses and a few other things, and then we would really we would really have what we need to move forward. Great job. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for taking the time to be here today. It was amazing. I um, really appreciate um, I know that uh, it, it's not easy, but I will say that there has been many uh, pitches from a car today. So uh, you're in good company, <laughs> but uh, thank you. Um, I was wondering if you could describe your uh, your team and your support network. So my team involves about four employees. So there's myself, who's the owner and operator, my husband, who's the head soap artisan along with myself, and we have four part-time farm employees. So they help us with all of the labeling, the harvesting. So we do about 90% of the harvesting on our own territory. And so Amazing. they're all, I'm training at the same time. So I look at my employees like, I'm training them for their own future as well. So all my knowledge about plant medicine goes right to them. And I involve all of the part-time employees in that learning aspect, because I think it's important. But they're varying yeah, ages, if you're after their um, cultural backgrounds, but they're about 50% indigenous and they're all different ages from about 15 to 60. Thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing um, in your pitch with us. It was fantastic. I um, would love to understand a little bit more about how you market your business. So we're primarily an e-commerce business. Um, I would say about maybe 15% of my sales are brick and mortar and the rest is all e-commerce throughout Canada and the United States. Um, the marketing is mostly social media there's been a few, you know, I'm, I've been in some magazines and that sort of thing, but it's primarily done through social media and just online presence, really. Great. Well, I'm uh, almost running out of time here, so I won't ask a question, but just wanted to say great pitch, fantastic job. Thank you so much for sharing your story <laughs> and, um, and best of luck. Well, thanks for having me. Great job, Leslie. Ani Nangos Ndijnikos Ketagonzi Bindunjiba Wasi Dorem. I started Ojibwe Natural almost five years ago to help combat my severe eczema and to make affordable handmade products scented with the traditional medicinal scents more accessible, especially to those with skin and scent sensitivities. I would use the funding from Pow Wow Pitch to complete the international product certification process and to build inventory to fulfill a new export contract that was secured this year. I would also invest into more business-to-business -business marketing to increase high volume sales going forward. My next goal is to open a small-scale factory warehouse in my home community to keep up the growing demand for Ojibwe natural products, employ people from my community, and streamline the production of products and fulfillment of online and wholesale orders. Expanding and growing Ojibwe natural will allow me to continue supporting my family, doing something that I love, and also to give back to my community. So I thank you all for the opportunity to be here. Chimi Gwech, and good luck to all the other pitchers. Wow. Good job. Um, thank you. Very good. Thank, thank you so much for, um, for sharing that with us. Uh, a really kind of impressive journey you've had so far. Um, what are you expecting for your sales over the next year? Um, so the next year, I expect to, um, yay, break a million dollars in sales. Amazing. Amazing. Um, would uh, would love to know, tell us a little bit more about your, your team. Is it you? Is it, do you have a team around you? We'd love to, to hear a little bit more about that. 
Um, so right now I have one full-time employee and one part-time employee. Um, over the next year, I hope to hire um, someone in a more managerial position and grow my staff a little bit as, as, the, um, as the business expands and we get a bigger space and um, a higher um, turnaround on uh, large orders. Good job on the pitch. Uh, just wondering, you, you said you had quite a bit of uh, revenue so far. Are you uh, yeah. making profit yet? Absolutely. Um, I've I've scaled the business myself um, from very small to very large um, with very little capital. I've been making a profit almost for, for over four years and I've been able to sustain, um, to um, take care of my family for the last three and employees for the last one. Excellent, thanks. Excellent job, thank you so much. So how do you how do you reach your customers? How, what's your marketing like? Um, so right now the, the main thing is social media, Facebook, Instagram. Um, I also have a website and I do um, just a lot of word of mouth, you know, on the powwow trail I did for a long time. I haven't been able to this summer, um, but yeah, for right now it's mainly social media online marketing um, to which I do want to ramp up. Amazing. As as an entrepreneur, what do you think is your greatest superpower? Um, being able to work on a little bit of sleep and have uh, a lot of self discipline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great job. Good job. Thank you so much. My name is Cece Meadows and I'm the founder and CEO of Brados Beauty. We're the first Chicana and indigenous owned beauty brand to be in a mega retailer. By the end of 2024, we will be in 600 JCPenney's locations and we will also be expanding into other retailers. I started off in the industry as an influencer and New York Fashion Week makeup artist and I saw the need to bring correct and accurate representation of Chicano and indigenous people to the beauty space. While I've been doing that, I started in 2018 in my baby girl's nursery, and we have currently expanded into three collections. Our newest collection will launch in October. These collections are in conjunction with other Native artists like Stephen Paul Judd and other artists that we can't talk about yet. <laughs> um, being a part of the beauty industry and being in the Native community and expanding and showing the people that we are resilient and we are beautiful is something that I take great pride and joy in. Great job. Thank you so much for uh, sharing with us, Cece. That was uh, what an incredible journey you've already had and so much too that you've already accomplished um, and really, really impressive in terms of, of where you've placed yourself um, would love to just understand your what your profit margins are like and where you see yourself growing. Yeah, so um, we are a 100% independently owned beauty brand. I own it um, and we bootstrap. That's I started off with $250 in 2018 in my baby girl's nursery and um, we've had losses every year just trying to expand. This will be our first year that we are profitable um that is something that's hard especially when you're trying to scale a brand on your own so every time you make a purchase from prado's beauty um i always joke around that you know i'm not a kardashian i'm not gonna go get a fake butt or <laughs> buy a lamborghini or jeffree star mansion uh, we're just gonna bootstrap that put it back into the business um i always joke around that my employees make more money than i do because they get paid and i don't and that's okay but um <laughs> This year we're going to be profitable. I'm really excited. In the first two months of 2022, um, we are probably we've already brought in just in the first quarter and the first second, the first and second quarter of this year, um, probably about eight hundred and ninety thousand dollars. So that's huge for us. That's amazing. Um, I love the passion and, uh, and, and love your story. Uh, would like to know a little bit more about what makes your product unique. Yeah, so um, I think for me, it's just bringing that vibrancy of who we are as people. I think that um, the story of Native Americans is always being told like in a past tense, like that we're not here. 
And so putting ourselves on the packaging and telling people and giving them a story of, you know, our survival and who we are as, as a culture and as a people, that's what makes us unique. They want to see that vibrancy. They want to see those stories come to life. And we do that through makeup. Great job. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Haku, uh, which is hello in Shumash, which is my tribe from the central coast of California, uh, where I was born and raised. And I'm fortunate enough to know uh, what it feels like uh, to be able to share the gift of the land and plants. But as we all know, it can be hard to connect with the earth and with the land, especially as indigenous people when we've been estranged from our own homelands. I started my skincare company, Rose Alchemista, 10 years ago um, after I suffered from homelessness and a police assault and trauma. I turned to the plants and the land to heal myself, and I helped share uh, my newfound healing with others um, through skincare. Uh, this is uh, one of my products here, uh, Rose Hibiscus Face Mask, um, which is an herbal powder. And I make all my products here on our farm uh, in Washington, where I've been living for the past six years, which also happens to be Chinook land. Uh, part of my mission with Rose Alchemista is promoting self-care and helping others. And I am... Oh, and I wrap it up? Okay. <laughs> it goes fast. Great, great job. <laughs> great job, Rody. I love the name. Um, Thank you. Just a question. How... How, um, in terms of sales, how much have you done since you've started your business? So I started my business uh, 10 years ago and I haven't quite broke 20,000 a year, but every year it grows. So every year it's gone from 1,000 to 10,000. Um, so right now I'm about 10,000 for the year, um, which with the holiday sales, it could, you know, double that. Um, so that's part of the thing with my mission is, you know, I started from nothing and I don't have any investors or partners. It's just me. Um, and so it's been miraculous. Great. Thanks. Great pitch. Thank you very much. Um, how do you reach your customers? So I have an online store with Shopify already. Um, I use Instagram, um, which is where most of my sales come from. I'm also part of the Portland Indigenous Marketplace. Um, I used to be a board member locally. Uh, so I'm a vendor there um, where I do in-person markets. So most of my focus on in-person markets are with the native community. Amazing. Uh, Rody, great pitch. Um, as an entrepreneur, what would you consider your biggest superpower? I guess for me, I don't give up on things. I also, my father's from Guatemala. He was a refugee. My stepfather was also from Mexico. He was an immigrant, you know, field worker. Um, I feel like being indigenous too has uh, inspired me to be more resilient. Um, so I, I'm also able to take bigger risks with things. And um, yeah, my grandma was also a gambler. <laughs> and so I feel like that part of me is just used to risk taking and dreaming big. And yeah. Love it. <laughs> um, really great pitch and really inspiring story. Thank you for sharing it with us. Thank you. <laughs> Good job. Good job. <laughs> Hi, hello, my name is Alia Sue. Our family has lineage to the Haida, the Wiwakai, and the Wet'suwet'en First Nations. We are an indigenous owned family business. We focus in organic, wild crafted and ethically sourced essential oils. Uh, we focus on the country of origin. What that means is the purest and highest quality of essential oils. Currently, I'm engaging conversations with my nation as I believe that we have room and opportunity for land-based healing and not just for jobs in the oil and gas industry. Uh, with this, we have recently uh, reached a very beautiful milestone of 40 retailers across Canada, including in incredible spaces like YVR Airport, where there deserves to be Indigenous representation, where we are looking to use the funds is to use on equipment to grow our business for labeling production uh, so that we can now enter Whole Foods Canada. Tabby Masai, thank you so much for this opportunity. Oh, <laughs> 
Yeah. 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 Thank you so much for sharing um, your your pitch with us. That was fantastic. Loved hearing your passion um, about your business. I um, would love to understand what differentiates your products from what else is in market. Of course. So what differentiates is ours is that we actually support our local BC farmers. So while we focus on the court, uh, country of origin, something like the Western Red Cedar, um, it's when you have the soil, it's very unique to BC. What we cannot do in France for the lavender is very unique to France, but what we can focus on is something so beautiful and rich to our culture and our community. Um, and that is a very single and critical difference between us and other competitive essential oil companies. Thank you. I hope that makes sense. It does, uh, an amazing pitch. Thank you so much. Um, you mentioned 40 retailers. That's a great accomplishment. Uh, curious to know how your sales are going. Yeah, so we actually just transferred over new ownership from another Indigenous family to us. Um, so right now we are on track to hit our target um, of $100,000 in our first year. Great pitch. Uh, just wondering what's the, you did say you're in 40 stores. What's the longer term three to five year goal? Yeah, our, th our long-term goal is to purchase the money if we win Powo Pitch, um, to be able to label and dispense instead of hand labeling and hand pouring so that we can keep everything in-house and not source to a third party like many other companies. We're striving to what Cheekbone Beauty is doing. Great. Great job. How do you market your products? Um, our wonderful Indigenous team, all of us uh, have backgrounds in education, whether it's a master's or education. Most of us have um, land guardianship, First Nation studies, um, and some science backgrounds. Amazing. You're the best. That was really amazing. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Great work, everyone. Now it's time to meet the consumer retail semifinalists. When you're watching sports, do you cheer for the underdog? I do. We love the underdog because they work harder and smarter to succeed. When they win, it gives us hope. My name is Tiana Burns. I am, sorry. I am the founder and owner of Twin Equipment and Tool Rentals. I am the underdog because I am an Indigenous woman in business from a small town in a male-dominated industry. I've worked harder than most over the last 10 years. I've assisted my husband, Dan Burns, develop his business, Twin Mechanical Contracting. As an added value, I decided to open Twin Equipment and Tool Rentals. I've worked smarter over the last 10 years by incorporating the seven grandfather's teachings into my business. Twin Rentals is now a successful recognized company. I'm asking you to vote for the underdog so I can continue to work harder and smarter. Thank you. Great job. Really liked Thank your you. presentation. Just wondering what, what kind of, uh, equipment do you rent? Mostly heavy equipment, some small equipment. Oh, some large ones. Yeah, like uh, big excavators, skid steers, telehandlers, okay. and small tools, yeah. Great pitch, thank you so much. <laughs> Love the underdog. Um, <laughs> what's your vision for your business? My vision is to keep expanding and hire more First Nations, give people more opportunities. The community that I live in, I grew up out here and um, it's located about 20 minutes outside of Sault Ste. Marie, which is a bigger town. So I just want to keep expanding and providing more jobs and more long-term rentals. Amazing. Um, do you have staff? I was wondering if you could describe yeah. your, your, your support team. <laughs> yeah, we have, uh, there's, I think all together, there's about nine of us, 10 of us, including myself and my husband also uh, contributes to my children. 
What is uh, your long-term vision for this business? Fantastic pitch, by the way. Oh, thank you. Um, my vision would be to continue um, so my kids have a future and my kids can take over eventually. I have four children and uh, like I said, my community means a lot to me. I grew up out here, so I'd like to provide more opportunities out here so people don't have to travel the highways to Sault Ste. Marie with the fuel the way that everything's going, it's the gas prices are crazy. Well, uh, Tiana, thank you so much. I'm, uh, I'm gonna run out of time here for a question, but just I wanted to say fantastic pitch uh, and thanks for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Good job. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chatney and I'm a Mohawk from the Aquatuck Reserve and I'm the co-founder of Poptronic, where you rent the latest pets without breaking the bank. We're kind of like a Best Buy, but with rentals. Our goal is to reduce e-waste while providing equal access to tech hardware. How? By offering tech hardware rentals, we're providing enhanced access to tech in communities that may not be able to purchase new tech hardware. Also by renting, you are helping to reduce electronic e-waste. We have also recently joined the Pledge 1% to donate 1% of our profits to youth STEM and computer science programs here in Aquasasne. We also plant a tree for every refurbished device that we sell, and this is to help offset the carbon emissions. If we won, we would like to use the 25,000 to expand our team with local hires, purchase new inventory, and increase our brand awareness. Thank you. <laughs> Right, that was fun. <laughs> that was so fun. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thanks so much, Shani. That was uh, a really, really great pitch. Um, we'd Thank love you. to know a little bit more about how your, how your traction's been to date. Uh, how are your sales? Okay, so um, we've been launching sort of in house, so we haven't been doing a big marketing push. Hence, why, if we get the money, we would like to get more of a marketing push out there and do more of an official grand opening. But um, there has been a lot of traction on our site. We go through our analytics and people are visiting. There is interest. And every month we are trending upwards and we are getting more rentals. Great job, Chani. I'm just wondering, are you, what's your longer term goal in say three to five years? So our long-term goal right now, this is our testing market right next to the Aquasas Mohawk Reserve in Cornwall, Ontario. We plan to start outreaching to Ottawa, Montreal, and then Toronto. But the goal for our five years is to be global. Thank you. Great job, great pitch. Thank you so much. Great idea. Thank you. Uh, who are you marketing to? Um, so we're marketing to like the millennial age, um, people from, up to 35 years old, tech professionals, teenagers who are looking to rent iPhones, laptops for school. Um, we also like to pitch to our older generation who might have grandkids coming for the weekend and who want to rent gaming systems for their grandkids without having to spend thousands to keep them entertained. Great idea. Amazing. Thank you. Um, can you describe your team? So right now I'm a co-founder and I have another co-founder, Kelly, who has a background in computer science and she's our developer for everything. So we're really lucky to have her in-house. She does our website. Uh, I do the marketing. I do the finances. I also have a background in finance. And we would like to hire a social media strategist from our um, neighboring Aquasasne. And then after that, our fourth hire, well, our fourth team member would be um, hopefully an expert in SEO so we can sort of Amazing. get a further reach or a brand awareness. Gotcha. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you, guys. Hi, I'm Teresa, the owner of Phil Vernon's Refill Store in Phil, Kelowna, and a citizen of the Métis Nation. My whole mission is to make our world a greener place by reducing plastic pollution. At Phil, you can come and fill your cleaning and hygiene products using your existing containers. To date, Phil stores have saved over 250,000 plastics from entering the environment. We offer high quality organic and plant-based products from indigenous local and Canadian suppliers, such as dish soap, laundry soap, shampoo. Our customers love how our products perform and it's shown with a 70% return customer rate. The first Phil opened in December of 2019 and just 11 months later, I mentored a Phil employee into a partner role for the second location. 
Mother Earth can use all the help she can right now with forest fires, heat waves, and flooding. We need to bring our Indigenous worldview to the forefront and help protect our Earth. The prize money would help to pay for franchising across BC and bring more Indigenous products onto the fill shelves. Thank you for the opportunity to make our world a greener place. Ooh, right and fine. Great job. <laughs> yeah, great job. Great to see you again. Um, I was wondering if you could detail your financial projections for the next year. Yeah, so we, in our first year, we uh, grossed over 700,000 and our second year over a million. So this year we're looking at over 1.5. And then with the addition of future fill locations with franchising, we should be able to reach over 2 million. Amazing, Teresa. Thank you so much for um, sharing your fantastic pitch with us and uh, an incredible um, business that you, you brought to market. Um, would love to just understand what your vision is for the business and where you see yourself in five years. Yeah, so because we've only been open for two and a half years, um, I want to get my feet on the ground for franchising in BC, bring more Indigenous products so that we can highlight our Indigenous community more and help support our Indigenous entrepreneurs in Phil. Then franchise across Canada would be ideal. There are some, an interested party in, from Europe in looking at a franchise model in both Sweden and Portugal, and that's very preliminary at this point. So um, just discussions, but there is an opportunity for this to go global and eventually I think the United States will be on board with refilling a little more and we'd be able to expand down into the states as well. Amazing. Thank you. Thanks so much, Teresa. That was a great pitch. Uh, curious to know how you're marketing your business today and any plans for evolving that in the future? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as far as marketing goes, refilling is a popular thing and the earth is a popular <laughs> thing to try and save right now. So there is some marketing that's just done um, inherently through the business. Um, as far as it goes, we have Instagram, we have Facebook. I've started with um, TikTok, but they're a little young. They don't necessarily appreciate me as much. We do radio advertising, um, Castanet, which is a local newspaper online. And then we actually do some newspaper advertising as well. Um, it targets a different market for 55 plus, which is a great supporter of our store. Excellent. Oh. <laughs> Great job. Great job. Great job. Fantastic work to all the semi-finalists in all three categories, consumer goods, beauty and wellness, and retail. With your products on the shelves and your stores open for business, you're providing consumers with the opportunity to experience Indigenous products, support Indigenous communities, and make the world a better place. We believe in all of you and your businesses, and we look forward to continuing to grow together. The judges scored, deliberated, and selected the winner of each category. The judges would like to provide honorary mentions to entrepreneurs in each category and acknowledge entrepreneurs in third place and the runner-up before announcing the winner. Let's start with the consumer goods category. The judges would like to provide an honorary mention to Robin Ivory Pearson, founder of Indigenously Infused. Coming in third place for the Consumer Good Powwow Pitch semifinals is Amy Jackson, founder of Native Love Notes. The runner up for Consumer Goods Powwow Pitch semifinals is Carrie Gray, founder of Shades of Gray Indigenous Pet Treats. And the winner of the Consumer Goods Powwow Pitch semifinals who is also taking home $1,000 tonight and is advancing to the finals is Jaylene Kanani Bell, founder of NoHo Home by Jaylene Kanani. Congratulations, Jaylene, for advancing to the finals. Great work, Carrie, Amy, Robin, and all of the consumer goods semifinalists. Now let's turn to the consumer beauty and wellness category. The judges would like to provide honorary mentions to Alyssa Asu, founder of Bear Essential Oils, for your energy, passion, and potential. And as well as to Leslie Asu, the founder of Standing Spruce Farm, for your perseverance, commitment, and strength. Coming in third place for the consumer beauty and wellness category is Nangu Zwabgijik, founder of Ojibwe Natural. 
The runner up for Pow Wow Pitch Beauty and Wellness semifinals is CC Meadow, founder of Prados Beauty. And the winner of the Pow Wow Pitch Beauty and Wellness semifinals, who is also taking home $1,000 tonight and is advancing to the finals, is Vanessa Marshall, founder of Jack 59 Inc. Congratulations, Vanessa, for moving on to the finals and for winning the consumer beauty and wellness category. Congratulations also to Cece, Nangoons, Leslie, and Alyssa for your acknowledgement and to all of the incredible semifinalists who made this such a tight race. And now let's turn to the consumer retail category. Coming in third place for the consumer retail category is Tiana Byrnes, founder of Twin Equipment and Tools Rental LTD. The runner up for the consumer retail category is Chatney Hearn, founder of Poptronic. And the winner of the Pow Wow Pitch Consumer Retail Semifinals, who is also taking home $1,000 tonight and is advancing to the final is Teresa Sanders, founder of Phil Vernon's Refill Store. Congratulations to Teresa for winning the consumer retail category and advancing to the finals. And well done to Chatney and Tiana for your excellent pitches and bringing indigenous business to Main Street. Remember, if your favorite entrepreneur didn't make it through, you can still vote for them to win the People's Choice Award. The entrepreneur that receives the most votes by September 19th will receive $1,000 and advance to the finals. Visit powwowpitch.org forward slash vote to vote now. Thank you to our judges for your support, excellent question, and for selecting the top entrepreneurs to move forward to the finals. Please share your final reflections. Yeah, on behalf of Shopify, Chi Miigwech to Powwow Pitch for inviting us back to be a judge in these incredible semifinals. Um, to all the consumer good entrepreneurs out there. It was an incredibly challenging, incredibly robust and diverse group of some of the most beautiful and talented Indigenous folks from around. Uh, thanks again. I hope every single individual continues on, continues to grow and continues to strive to make our communities better. Chimigwech, thank you. Chimigwech, on behalf of Meta, I want to thank Pow Wow Pitch, Sunshine and her amazing team for allowing, I'm honored to be part of the judging this year. And I am so excited, so pumped for all of these amazing indigenous entrepreneurs who are breaking through barriers and getting us, getting our name out there. So congratulations, keep it up. There is so much success out there and so much potential. Thank you. It's been great being here on behalf of RBC once again at Pow Wow Pitch. Great presentations today. All the uh, presenters were excellent, very hard uh, decisions made on our end, but uh, congratulations to all of the pitchers for, and it looks like we're gonna have a very bright future with all of you. I just wanted to say thank you to the entire Pow Wow Pitch team for um, giving me the opportunity to be part of this um, incredible uh, day. Um, you know, entrepreneurship, innovation, and uh, diversity go hand in hand, and we're really, um, you know, appreciative of the opportunity to be part of this amazing initiative. Um, an incredible day with very, very inspiring pitches. Congratulations to everyone that participated. Um, a lot of exciting uh, businesses that are going to help to shape the future. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to say thank you uh, to the entire Pow Wow Pitch team uh, on behalf of Canada Post. I'm so uh, you know grateful and uh, and proud to be a judge uh, this year for the Pow Wow Pitch uh, 2022 competition. Uh, what a what a day! Uh, an incredible initiative. Hearing all of the uh, the every entrepreneur and those Indigenous entrepreneurs pitching. Uh, you did a tremendous job and uh, looking forward to, uh, to seeing you and your products and your businesses grow in the future. Thank you, judges. Thank you to our presenting sponsors, RBC, Shopify, Meta, and MasterCard. 
our silver sponsors, the Business Development Bank of Canada, Canada Post, Export Development Canada, the Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada, Jelly Academy, NACA, and Futurepreneur. Our seed sponsors, MyTax, MNP, LLP, Sklar Wilton and Associates, Invest Ottawa, the Women Entrepreneurship Knowledge Hub, CIRA, Best Buy, Rakuten Advertising, and Tecumloops Business and Economic Development. Our collaborating partners, Raven Reads, Native Love Notes, CFDC of CIFN, Indigenous Lift Collective, Entrepreneur, Women in Business New Brunswick. Thank you to our mentors, volunteers, and judges for your support in bringing the 2022 Pow Wow Pitch online and across Turtle Island this evening. Thank you also to our executive producer, Victoria Lennox, and our creative producer, Cyprian Shalinkevich, for bringing our vision to life. A huge congratulations to tonight's entrepreneurs for their passionate and compelling pitches. Thank you to our viewers tonight for cheering on Indigenous entrepreneurs through Pow Wow Pitch. Let's keep the conversation going using the hashtag Pow Wow Pitch. Join us tomorrow evening for the Creative Category semifinals and each evening this week from 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Until tomorrow, I'm your host, Sunshine Tanasco, signing off. Miigwech kipijayeg non gomenakshe.